Hey everybody, it's Greg Rice here in the Bucket, Pawtucket, Rhode Island. And I gotta say, my haircut's looking phenomenal, by the way. Thank you to Brandon over at Vintage Barbershop for taking care of my do. And what we are gonna do right now is go over the 12 proposed laws that are being heard at the State House tonight. I'll be there along with countless others to fight the good fight against anti-landlord legislation, things that are hurting, harming, and suffocating our business. And today is March 27th, and some of these were rescheduled from last week. So I just want to go through some of them, and I have my uh, testimony that I'm not going to bore you with, but I just want you to see what's going on, okay? So the biggest one today is... House Bill 7049, and this is limiting rental increases to no more than 4% annually, okay? Rent stabilization, you can call this, not rent control, okay? It's saying you can't go more than 4% of a base rent per year. So if the rent's 1000 next year you can raise it to $1,040, okay? Next one is House Bill 7960 which is just cause evictions, meaning you can't just terminate someone's tenancy arbitrarily. You have to have a bona fide reason or they're committing a violation of the lease. They're not paying their rent, things like that. You can't just say, oh, uh, I want to renovate this unit or oh, I just want this vacant. You need to have a just cause, hence the name. And we don't support that, okay? And it also, would tie in the allowed max increase of rent to just 4%. Okay, so you see some of these bills have cross sections with other bills, right? Other components are put in multiple bills. The next one is House Bill 7372, which limits residential rent increases to 10% plus the increase in the consumer price index annually. So this is just a, a quasi version of the first one here of House Bill 7049, but it just has a 10% limitation plus CPI. So again, not something that we support. House Bill 7962 recognizes tenants unions and provides a procedure whereby the Housing Resources Commission, which is already in existence, shall administer a hearing process for consolidated complaints filed by tenants unions pertaining to the rights and obligations of both the tenant and the landlord alike. So for example, housing violation comes in, which came in today. We're gonna to fix that. We're gonna go take care of that. We're gonna coordinate with the tenant, the whole shebang. This is saying that in addition to the town being involved for complaints, specifically with maintenance, there's now gonna be a commission that runs concurrently alongside the town or city that is making sure that it's followed up upon. When the town is the one that has the jurisdiction, has the information, has the staff, has the ability to mark up your title for things, has the ability to call you into municipal court, Okay, what is this commission going to do other than add another cook in the kitchen? We don't support this. House Bill 7957 creates the division, creates the division, okay, of civil representation within the Department of Housing and requires civil representation by a DLO, which is a designated legal organization, to provide free legal representation to all tenants who qualify. Again, when we go to court, tenants usually have their own attorney or they handle the issue on their own. Hey, I got this much money. Hey, I wanna leave. Hey, this person's no longer here. They sign a stipulation, which takes 30 seconds, and then the judge will approve that. The judge will never approve a stipulation that is lopsided or if he feels that the tenant is not in the right state of mind to make that decision. So the judge is already policing the agreements 
We don't need to get in another organization involved, more money, more people, when we're already getting the desired results, and we have been doing so for over a decade with no issues. Tenants sign stipulations all the time, with an attorney or without one. So this is, again, more people, more cost, more resources, more time. Next one is House Bill 7961, which is imposing a fine of up to $150 a day on a landlord for failure to deliver a copy of a state or local housing code violation to each tenant in the property affected by said violation. So again, um, we get violations for high grass or debris outside. We would have to give a copy of that notice to all the tenants in the property to notify them that the property has been notified. Okay, it's extra. It's word of the day, superfluous, not necessary. When the tenants are the ones that typically will call for housing violations, all right? They're the ones that are the reason the city's there looking at the leak that hasn't been fixed for a month. So why are we notifying them as well? And frankly, the amount of violations that happen, especially with lead, they would scare the tenants. They would make them worry. They would add more stress. They would be calling the city or towns. Hey, I'm a tenant. Do I have lead poisoning? Me and my child, blah, blah, blah. It's adding more frizz. When the landlord is responsible, the management company like us is taking care of these things all the time, quietly getting things done. That's how it should be. You shouldn't be adding more noise and fines too. Crazy. Next is House Bill 7746 which provides that landlords would pay interest on a security deposit. Now, I don't even know, what the hell is a savings interest rate nowadays? Savings account, interest, I'll do a calculating. All right, let's say we got thousand bucks. Thousand bucks over a period of one year, we'll do 0.5% annual percentage yield, which is very high, that would equal an interest of $3.65 on $1,000 after one year. What are we doing? And all the, imagine the accounts that you have to open, the separate accounts, especially us, seven, 800 tenants, a separate account to give them a dollar. For what, what does that solve? House Bill 7174, and these are what, this is what your elected officials are doing. You say, oh, I don't want to get involved. Oh, I'm too busy. Oh, I'm too this. This is what they're spending their time on. The people that you have voted into office. This is what they're doing. Okay. 7174 prohibits landlords from inquiring about an applicant's prior incarceration and from discriminating against those who have been released from prison. And I know the prison better than anybody. I've taught in the prison system, medium security. I've been in there. The inmates understand they have a lifetime bumper sticker. And even when they pay their debts to society, many of them pay in years and decades, they understand that that will hinder them in different facets of their life. And they're going to have to navigate those waters. However, as a landlord, I am entitled to that data and that information so I can make the best decision possible for the safety, security, and longevity of my investment. How was that? <laughs> Presidential, I might say. Next is House Bill 7647 requires landlords to list all mandatory fees when advertising a property, as well as the first page, any of these fees on the first page of the lease, which I agree with. Tenants should know what they're paying for. What I don't agree with is prohibiting a landlord from charging a convenience fee. Okay, we have probably a thousand payments, give or take, on a monthly basis, and tenants have to pay that convenience fee, which is $2.95. That goes to the software company. If we had to absorb that cost, that would be like 3,000 bucks a month. Okay, they can send a check, tenants send checks, money orders, cashier's checks. We don't force them to pay online, 
but they agree with the convenience of it, and that's why they pay the convenience fee, because it's convenient. Okay? House Bill 7305 prohibits discrimination based on housing status. Okay, if they have a subsidized voucher. It defines assistance animal, and it makes it unlawful to issue discriminatory notices or statements relating to the sale, rental, or leasing of housing, and to delete an unconstitutional provision. So I think that the assistance animal needs definition because I can go register my pet dinosaur online and get a certificate. I agree with the other components of that bill. House Bill 7304 requires landlords to give a rental increase notice of at least 90 days before instead of 30 for market rate tenants and 120 days for tenants 62 and above. So three to four months notice for a rental increase. Not fair. I agree if there's a leasehold, yes, you wait until the end. But if a tenant is week to week or month to month, they should get one month's notice. That's being generous because their deposit is equal to one month's rent. So if you want to increase it to 90 days, let me get a deposit for 90 days. And sure, you can have your 90 day notice. But that gives them more time to play games, okay, and leave without notice, unobliged, no problem, whatever. We don't have any recourse. So that 30 day is our safety net, and we need to need to preserve that. Finally, 7162 permits those other residents, this is an interesting one, of a residential dwelling unit to extend the term of the rental agreement period for not to exceed three months after the death of the primary leasee. That one I agree with. If somebody dies, you need to be able to say, hey, let me figure it out. I'll pay you. Let me extend the, give me a couple months. I might stay. I might leave. That one to me makes sense, but um, some of my fellow landlords may disagree. But I'm being honest. I shoot you guys straight. Okay, I don't follow the herd. I follow myself. I follow my intuition, and I always have. And you can count on that when you listen to my videos here, that I'm going to tell you how I feel. I have no corporate masters or overlords. Obviously, I have my allegiance to Nexus, but Nick gives me the ability to speak freely here. And I do so. And I speak things that you may agree with or you may not agree with. But today, specifically, it's very hard to get honest, truthful, unimpacted thought. And I'm doing my best to give you that here right now. So any questions, any concerns, let me know. And again, check out the Rhode Island Coalition of Housing Providers on Facebook. You get notified. And just being aware of this is important. You don't have to get involved, but you should, okay? Because it's impacting everybody from the small landlords all the way up to the big landlords. So once again, Greg Rice here in the bucket, your property and your bullshit legislation Managed.